so many foods are always in the news because some new piece of research is saying it's good and then it's bad. Now, one of those commonly consumed items is coffee. For a lot of people, they drink a cup of coffee or two or three cups of coffee every single day. So it's a bit alarming if a piece of research comes out that says coffee is not good for this condition. In this video, I wanna talk about from a Chinese medicine point of view, is coffee good for you or bad for you? Hey guys, Dr. Alex Hine, author of the Health Book Master of the Day, doctor of Chinese medicine and acupuncturist. So before we jump into this video, two very important links. Right below this video, there are two links. And the first is if you want to become a patient of mine in my private practice in Los Angeles, you can contact the link below, which has a link to my private practice to contact me or to reach out to someone at my office. The second is for a free guide, which is four daily rituals that could potentially help you add years to your life with Chinese medicine. So before we jump into talking about coffee specifically, the definition of health in Chinese medicine is a little bit different than traditional medicine. You know, if you ask your doctor what is healthy, they will probably say something like a healthy BMI, your blood work, your labs look good. But I have a lot of patients I see. Probably 30% of my patients have normal labs, but they don't feel well. And they're not well. They're sick from a Chinese medicine point of view on top of the fact that they feel sick. So how could that be true on its own? Well, I think Chinese medicine is a bit more of a nuanced description. And I want to quote a chapter from our most ancient medical book, The Yellow Emperor's Inner Classic. And the very first chapter talks about longevity and health. So some of these terms are a bit archaic, but I want to explain this after reading it. So the first chapter says, in comparison to why people in ancient times, they talked about people who follow the Tao live a long life versus modern people who are old by the time they're 50. He says, now when the sages of high antiquity taught those below, they always spoke to them about the following. They talked about quiet peacefulness, absolute emptiness, that the true chi follows these states. When essence and spirit are guarded internally, where could a disease come from? Hence, the mind is relaxed and one has few desires. The heart is at peace and one is not in fear. The physical appearance is taxed, but is not tired. Now, there are more chapters in this book that talk about the free flow of qi. I like to use the word circulation, function, in these organs as being the definition of health. So let's talk about the idea of coffee because everything we put into our body has an effect on what's called the qi dynamic in Chinese medicine. Now the qi dynamic maybe on a very material level is a synonym for physiology, right? Healthy functioning qi dynamic is healthy physiology. The opposite is pathology. When we talk about the qi dynamic, healthy physiological flow is for example, eating food, you digest the food without much discomfort and you pass it in a bowel movement also without much discomfort. Obviously, there are many places that can go wrong because I see so many patients for GI problems and I've struggled with them lifelong myself. But let's give an example. So a study may say that there's a direct correlation between how much coffee you drink and your longevity, that it's good for circulation or that it has antioxidants. But let's say you as an individual, you drink coffee and you get a lot of indigestion or you get full on acid reflux or you get heart palpitations, or insomnia, or light sleep, or anxiety. Do you trust the study that says drinking more coffee is better for you? Or do you trust your body, which says coffee sure as hell is not a health food for me. This is definitely increasing pathology. Because if I don't have coffee, I don't have acid reflux. When I do have it, I get a lot of indigestion and acid reflux. So what do you trust? In my opinion, if you're having gastrointestinal upset, if you're having nervous system issues, palpitations, anxiety, insomnia from coffee, coffee is not a health food for you. Regardless of what a study says or 500,000 sample size population says for this study on coffee, if coffee is causing that much upset to your physiology, to us in Chinese medicine, the qi dynamic, it is not something that's going to help you live a long, healthy life, clearly. But I'm often surprised by the fact that sometimes people will trust a study over their own body. So they will say, the study says this, my doctor says this, when they are full of pathology and illness. So from a physiological perspective and a pathological perspective, is coffee good for you or bad for you? If you're more of the sensitive type, that coffee gives you indigestion, it gives you reflux, probably shouldn't drink it or should be careful of the dosage. Because I think as Hippocrates said, Hippocrates or Paracelsus, the dose makes the poison. So maybe like me, you can only have coffee every couple days or a couple times a week. 
Maybe you're someone who tolerates coffee really well and you can even drink it before bed and you're out like a light and you sleep well and you have good energy. If that's the case, maybe coffee is fine. Maybe you're someone that gets constipated easily even though you eat a decent diet. Maybe you eat a crap diet, but coffee helps you stay regular with no other ill effects. Then maybe coffee is a very therapeutic agent for you because the lack of constipation, right? Having a healthy bowel movement will be better than missing a day or two or three. And if the coffee has no other ill effects in your body, maybe it is a medicine. So thinking about, is this more medicine or more poison based on the effect it has on my body is really high level medicine. And I think we need to get back to the spot where we are trusting ourselves and not just relying on a study, even though we do that and we don't feel that well. So keep in mind common sense. Is coffee good or bad for you? The answer is always, it depends. And bad for who? Who is drinking coffee? It's not about the substance coffee necessarily. It's not straight poison. It's not arsenic. Or it's not mercury. It's a food substance, but can be quite strong and can have side effects. So who is it for? Is it more medicine, more poison, and at what dose? I think that's something really important to think about because I don't think a lot of people do. So my two cents on coffee and the effect it has on the body the physiology in Chinese medicine. Before you guys go, don't forget those two links right below this video to reach out to contact my private practice or to download that free guide. And otherwise, I have two related videos for you right there.